This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. May the Lord be in our hearts to encourage us in living the gospel. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. So, I appreciate this opportunity uh, from Father Andrew to preach once in a while. Uh, put on uh, an, old, an old habit. So, I, uh, it's pretty clear to me from the beautiful hymns we have just sung and the scriptures we have listened to that there are two life experiences that we're focused on this morning. Fear and faith and God's promise. A number of years ago, about 38 years ago, uh, I was in Salt Lake City, an assisting priest in a parish with a school, and every morning I taught sixth grade religion at 8 o'clock. And this was in the spring of the year, April or so. And I was busy teaching, and the door to the classroom was at the back, and there was this loud knock, and the door opened, and in popped the principal, Sister Evangelist. Father Jerry, I need to see you outside right now. Ooh, <laughs> that principal thing still got me. What did I do? <laughs> so I came outside, and very seriously she said, we just had four streakers run down the hallway of the school. And I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> In the second grade classroom doorway, was that teacher with three of her little ones. One of the girls' name is Andrea. And she taught me a very important lesson for life about that whole experience. She, of course, went home after school, and when her dad came home, she ran up to him and said, Daddy, Daddy, guess what? We had streakers today at school. Oh. Well, were they boys or girls? She says, I don't know. They had sacks over their heads. <laughs> what in the world is the lesson from that? <laughs> There's always more to life than meets the eye. And she was standing at eye level, for Pete's sakes. <laughs> That's exactly what Abraham found. We hear once again that beautiful story of God's reaching out to Abraham and Sarah when it was just Abram at that point and didn't have the fuller name. and saying to them, giving them a promise that was absolutely illogical. There's no possible rational reason for anybody of that age to believe what God was saying. Well, clearly it wasn't up to them. I presume they'd been trying for a long, long time. Nevertheless, to help them grasp what was part of that promise, God took them out of the tent and said, Look up to the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's the host of generations and nations you will start. Well, remember their perspective. The earth was flat. There was a dome over the earth holding up the waters above, and those lights up there we called stars. But even in that enormously limited understanding, there were more stars than they could count. They chose to believe and left off on a journey in my favorite part from, uh, from Hebrews is 
They didn't know where they were going. Well, boy, isn't that a metaphor for life? <laughs> you know, when we were 20 years old, most of us was Palm Springs on the horizon? Unless you've been born here. Exactly. So nevertheless, they took off. And I thought, uh, remember last March, some of you will, the senior ministry group in the parish ran a bus into Los Angeles to go see the Endeavour space shuttle. Well, Nathan and I went. I was so excited. And we saw this wonderful movie. I would love to get in the time machine and go back and get Abraham and Sarah and say, I have a surprise for you. And show the images in that huge screen that we saw that the Hubble telescope is showing. You thought you couldn't count the stars then. This is even more overwhelming. And it's the whole overwhelming nature of life that I, I want to look at for a moment because it happens to all of us. As Father Andrew said, I, I work in hospice and I deal a lot with also people after they've lost someone. And, you know, I've lost my soulmate who was with me for the last 60 years. How do I do this? It's frightening. Or we get a diagnosis for ourselves or from someone we love or even one of the children. It's frightening. And it's overwhelming. That is exactly why I believe both God saying to Abraham and Sarah and Jesus to the early disciples. First lines in our scriptures today. Do not be afraid. Notice what they did not say. They did not say, do not feel afraid. It's very different. The feeling is a natural part of life God built into us, as all our array of feelings are, to help communicate something about what we are experiencing right now. And in that fear, there is a lot of energy. But sometimes we can get stuck living in the fear. And that's what both God said and Jesus. Do not live in that fear. Well, how in the world do you do that? That is precisely why we have been given the gift of faith that helps us, as the letter to Hebrews so beautifully says, to have a sense of conviction about the things we cannot see. If we could have brought Moses and Sarah to the present day, we say it's 4,000 plus years since then, there have been billions of people who have followed your step and come to know one God. Something they could never have foreseen. And in 2,000 years, something the early disciples could likewise never have foreseen, they could not see that. But no, I just noticed, it's always fascinating to me how many times I'll read through scriptures I've seen a hundred times and prayed over. The two words that stuck out for me today were, Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock. What do you mean, little? <laughs> they were little. Look what they were up against. In fact, they didn't even know all that they were going to be up against. But look what's happened in 2,000 years. The billions of people 
who followed after them, because they took those steps in faith. Even here at St. Paul's, we are coming upon our 75th anniversary. 75 years ago, a very small group of people got together to form this parish family. And look where we are now. Little by little, they lived out the gospel. Imperfectly, absolutely. But they lived it out faithfully. You see, my friends, when Jesus invites us to come and follow, he understands how fearful the journey can be. But he keeps saying to us, do not live in that fear. Use the power of the gift of faith that solidifies the hope and the promise that comes from God and from me. And we can do that just like Abraham and Sarah. Why? Because we have a sense of history. We can trust that God will bring to fulfillment what has been promised. So once again, we are working, keeping the store of the most important heart values of our life as spiritual things, not the physical things, the ones that last. And because we keep striving to be faithful, dropping off food to feed people whom we will never see, we will have no idea what effect that will have. Dropping off clothes, giving out some food and encouragement to the people at Roy's, welcoming people here that we may never see again. I don't know where that's all going to be. It's not in our hands. That's up to God, isn't it? But because we stay faithful to that path, as Jesus gave us an example, Jesus is the master, and we are once again gathered in the master's house, seated at the master's table to be nourished by the word and the promise and reminded, <laughs> because we so forget, and to be fed by the bread of eternal life. There is always more to life than meets the eye. Amen.